Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we're converting our slides to digital. Well, I am from a generation where a lot of our family vacations and our family memories were captured on these, and these are slides. And what would happen is mom or dad would take all of these photographs, they would send them away, they would come back developed onto these little uh, images, I guess you'll call them, and the family would come over. Dad would set up the screen, the projector would be set up, and everyone would sit around and enjoy time together looking at the family photos up on this screen, having conversations about what they saw and that sort of thing. Taking photos back then was not just a matter of capturing your memories, but it was also a big social event, and those days are gone, but it seems that it's getting harder and harder to find some way to view these photos. So today, we're going to play around with a bit of experimentation and see if we can't convert these to digital with simple things that you can do in your shop. So let's head over to the bench and I'll show you what I have in mind. Well, I want to keep this build as simple as possible using material that most people would either have or have access to. So the equipment that I want to use to be able to transfer these slides to digital is my cell phone. And I'm pretty sure most of us have cell phones these days and that's what we're going to use. But what you need to do is you need to test your phones focal distance. It's minimal focal distance. So I have my cutting board here which has these fine measurements on it here and I'm just going to go into my phone and snap some pictures. I have a ruler that's attached to a square just to keep it upright and starting at one inch I'm going to snap a picture and then two inches and then three inches and then four. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop there and just have a look at the images. Well, one is useless, it's too blurry. Two, useless. Three is pretty good, pretty good. But four is very clear. If I zoom in on that, I can see how clear that image is. Three is still a little blurry. It's not as crisp as I would like, so, but four, gives a nice image. You know what, let's try five and just make sure. So I'll put this at five inches and take the image. Let's have a look at that one. All right, it's a toss up between four and five. All right, I'm thinking, you know what? I'm thinking five inches. That seems to be better than four. Okay, so that is five inches here for my phone is the minimum distance that I can get to the slide in order to get a perfect focus. In other words, I need to keep the phone a minimum of five inches above our subject matter. So the first thing that we're going to do is we need to make a holder for our phone. And for that, we're going to use some black foam core. Now foam core is essentially what it sounds like. It is a foam based core with kind of like a thicker paper material laminated to the outsides. Um, you can get it at your local craft store. I got this stuff at a dollar store. So you can uh, get it pretty much anywhere. What I have is two pieces that are six inches by nine inches and that measurement came from measuring my phone and adding basically an inch and a half all the way around. So on one of our pieces of six by nine foam core, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace my phone and then cut it out. I'm going to try to use the scroll saw. I don't know if that's going to work, but if you don't have a scroll saw, you can just use a utility knife that cuts this stuff beautifully. You want a snug fit so that your phone isn't going to move side to side or up and down. It doesn't have to be tight, but just something to hold it nicely in place. So let's get that hole cut. 
Well, with a number two blade, that actually works surprisingly well. Um, if you're going to use a scroll saw, turn your speed down, guys. I had mine up a little high, being so used to cutting wood, and it really wants to run away with you. So we'll just test now to make sure that our phone fits in there nicely. And you know what? It's got a nice snug fit side to side. It's got a little bit of movement top to bottom, but that's okay. Nothing drastic. You're going to be clicking photos on this. So basically you don't want it to, every time you click a photo, you don't want it to, have to shift. That's what you're trying to avoid. So what we need to do now, the next step is we need to measure where our lenses are and we need to mark it. And in that corner of your second piece, we are going to make a cutout for our lenses. So I'm gonna get that cut out and then we can attach these together. Okay, and with that whole cut, we can line these two pieces up, sit our cell phone in there, open up your camera app, and just make sure that you're not with your lens, you're not catching any of the edges of the foam core in your image. Mine looks good. So we can attach these two pieces together now. And in order to do that, nothing fancy, we're just gonna use our glue gun. So a little bit of a run of hot glue around the perimeter here of our foam core piece, just a light bit, and then we will press them together and hold it till the glue cools, and that will be our um, top piece or our phone holder finished. Well, we now need to make the box that our phone will sit on or our phone frame will sit on. So I have cut some pieces of foam core. Um, they are five inches wide and they are the dimensions that will suit to make your box. Uh, in this case, this is nine inches long. Um, and these ones here are five and five eighths long. So we're just going to glue them together using our hot glue gun, the same fashion as we did our frame for our phone. Just a little bit of glue there, lining up our pieces and gluing them together. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna to try to get it as good as you can. So we'll just glue on this other side here and we'll glue all four sides together to form a box. Okay, and there we have our photo box that will hold the top for our foam. So at this point now, we can place a layer of hot glue around the perimeter and glue our phone frame to our box. Okay, and there is the main box of our build. Um, we now need to concentrate on making the slide holder itself. So for that, we're going to need a strip of foam core three inches wide. Now I had said that for the slide holder, it was going to be a three inch wide piece of foam core. And that is true, provided that your slides are the same size that mine are, which are a two by two slide. What we need to do is about six inches back. We have a longer piece here because we need to make adjustments afterwards. So about six inches back, centered on our three inches, we need to cut a hole in our slide holder that is going to allow our window, where our picture is, to be illuminated from the back side. Um, in this case here, this window is one inch by one inch, it looks like, yes. So I will be making uh, a, a little light frame or a hole there that will be an inch and a half by an inch and a half. That'll give me a quarter of an inch on either side in order to support our slide. So centered on our three inches here, 
about six inches back. Like I said, we need to make adjustments. So about six inches back, we are going to place a one inch, sorry, an inch and a half by an inch and a half hole. Okay, and now what I have is two half inch wide pieces that we will glue along our whole length here using again our hot glue gun. And that is going to sandwich our slide right in here to make sure that it'll hold it square just like that over top of our hole. So you want to make sure that your slide is going to slide all the way along. So just be careful when you glue this in place. Now this project requires some sort of a light source. Uh, in this case, I just have my light table. This is not what we're going to use for the final product, but it's just for testing. So I have my slide frame here, and we're going to take one of our slides and just center it over top of our hole, just like that. Now, you want to take your box that has your phone attached to it and turn your phone on, go into your camera application and you want to sit your camera over top of here so that your photo is centered and squared on your screen just like that okay right there we are squared and centered of course you can zoom in if you want to see the image but for now we are centered on there i think we could probably square it up a little better but for the most part, we are centered. So, what we want to do now that we have that is we want to mark on the side of our box where it is that our frame lines up. And then we need to cut a notch on the left hand side to house that frame. As well, what we need to do at this point is mark on the right hand side here where our frame protrudes outside of our main box because we're going to have to cut that off. So for starters now, let's get that notch cut for our frame and I'll show you what I mean, hopefully clarify it once I get it cut. Now I had said that you'd only cut the notch in the left side. I lied. You cut it in both sides. And the mark that we made at the edge of our frame here, we have cut it off at that length. And then we have placed it in our notch and measured so that we are two inches outside the box on the left. And we can line this up now and glue it in place. And that will be our frame that will hold our slides as we uh, as we are converting them. So the last piece that I want to make here is the bottom. And the bottom is simply a piece of foam core that is the same dimension that we had here at the top, six by nine. We can cut that, but we need to cut a hole in it. So don't glue it in place just yet. I'll show you what you have to do. Okay, so right now we're looking at the back of the slide converter. And as I said, I've cut a piece of foam core that is six by nine to be our backing piece to complete the box. But we need right here, a hole for our light source. So you want it to be just a little larger than what this hole is here, lined up with it so that the light will be concentrated right there on your slide. So get that thing cut, the hole for our light source, and then you're going to need just a little bit of parchment paper. So with a little piece of parchment paper, we're just going to use some rubber cement here. If you don't have rubber cement, it's no big deal, you could use tape. And we're just going to brush some of this on and over this hole, we're going to place a small piece of parchment. The reason for this is it will diffuse the light. The problem is if you have a light source underneath, let's say LEDs, for example, those LEDs will show in your slide because the individual LEDs will show through. 
So you need to diffuse it, and that is the purpose of the parchment paper. Okay, there we go. So we're going to let that cure, and then once it cures, um, I think just for good measure, I will be putting some tape around the outside just to give it a little bit of an extra seal. And uh, then we can glue this piece here onto the inside of, or the back side of our photo box to complete the box. Okay, so now it's time for some testing. And all I've done here is I have a light source here on the floor and you don't want a bright light source or too bright of a light source because it will distort your photos. But all I've done is I have placed a slide inside here until it lines up. We're going to just zoom in here as we wish and snap the photo. And then the way that I've designed this is to make it as seamless as possible. You don't want to mess around. So you can just push this in until your next slide lines up. Take that one out the other side and a little click. There you go. And then the next one, slide it in place. So you get it lined up. And you can just go through converting these as you wish. You can go through afterwards if you want and clean them up and you know, trim them, crop them, whatever you wish. You can print them up, you can leave them digital. But it is, uh, it's a great way to go through and be able to transfer your photo slides that you've had into digital images, guys. So, there you go. Transferring your slides into digital. And there you have it converting your old slides into digital images. Guys, I did say at the beginning that this was a huge experiment and that I didn't know if it was going to work. And it took days, days and days of different testing. Not testing of the actual box that we made itself, not testing of the camera operation or the cell phone, um, what it took the testing of was diffusing the light. And I will tell you that that parchment paper that we put there to diffuse that backlight doesn't work. Doesn't work at all. And uh, I tried several different things. I tried parchment paper. I tried vellum. I tried um, wax paper. I tried just using my iPad at the back as a backlight. None of it worked. The reason it didn't work is because it shows every imperfection. The parchment paper, look at the sky here. The sky looks almost blotchy, like it was some bad watercolor painting. And the tracing paper, or vellum, did the exact same thing, just to a lesser degree. Um, the wax paper, a little better results, but yet it uh, still didn't give the results that I was after. And then, of course, we went from there to just the iPad for a backlight. Uh, I downloaded a, a, a flashlight app and you could change the brightness, which worked great, but it showed the pixels of the iPad in the background of the photos. You have to remember that you're backlighting these and every imperfection in the lighting is going to show in your slide. Um, so it's very important that you get good diffusion. So what I ended up trying actually from the dollar store was this frosted plastic uh, cutting mat they are sold as. It costs like a buck fifty and that gave me the results I was looking for. So the key, the absolute key is light diffusion here. It's great to build this fancy little foam core box, but without proper light diffusion, you're not gonna get the results that you like. Um, however, one other thing I will point out, experiment with it. Get the light diffusion that works best for you because just because it worked for me doesn't mean it's going to for you. Play with it, experiment with it. See how you like your different results. But the one thing I will point out, your slides have to be clean. 
any little bit of dust or any little bit of hair or anything like that will show on your final picture. You can see here, I think that's an eyelash <laughs> right there on the photo. Uh, you need to make sure they're clean. So get your little lens cleaner or a little dust blower, whatever you can use to brush them off and make sure that they're nice and clean, no fingerprints, that sort of thing, and you should have no problem. But all in all, this thing, once I got the diffusion down pat, worked fantastically. Sliding those slides through on the one side, they drop out the other, so no fuss, no muss, not load it, line it up, do this, do that, no, no, no. You put it in one side, you use the next slide to push the next one through, and they just fall out the one end. So it's a great system. Um, my wife could sit there with a little brush cleaner, clean them all off, and put them in a pile, and I just keep taking and clicking to convert all of these to digital. And guys, if you are from the generation that has a lot of these slides around and you really want to look at them and view them and that sort of thing, but your projector is pooched, you can't get a lamp anymore. This entire setup, uh, including that sheet, cost me about three bucks, I guess it was. So three dollars and a little bit of time and you can view all your old photos again and really what a lot of memories came back when I'm looking at these. Guys, you got to give this a try. I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. This one's been a lot of fun. I like doing little experiments like this on the show. Uh, it gives me an opportunity to play around. You never know what you're going to end up with. You never know if it's going to work. Sometimes it fails, sometimes it works, but today's was a fantastic success. Uh, very exciting for me. So, guys, I, I do hope you've enjoyed today's content. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you won't miss notifications of the future episodes of the show. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I hope you're going to try this for yourself if you've got slides lying around. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.